Good. Shall we start here with the area of the kite? Yeah. Okay. What's the formula, the general formula for the area of a kite when you know the two diagonals? In other words, this is D1 and this is D2. Notice that that's the information they're giving us. The, this vertical diagonal is 15. This horizontal one is 27. What's yeah. the general formula? Um, isn't it like... Oh, I, I forget. It's like R squared. Nah, actually, it's pretty straightforward. It's 1 half times D1 times D2. Oh, okay. okay. Now, I know that one of the things that used to happen to me is that I couldn't remember whether it was one half or just D1 times D2. Well, let me show you how you can remember that. Okay. If I draw a rectangle around that kite. Yeah. Is that rectangle bigger or smaller than the kite? Bigger. What's the area of the rectangle? Half. The area of the rectangle is D1 times D2. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Base times height. So if the area of the rectangle is D1 times D2, that kite looks an awful lot like half. And yeah. in fact it is, because this kite is made up of a bunch of triangles. And triangles are always half of the rectangle that they're inscribed in. Okay. Okay. In other words, notice this part is half of this little area. This part is half of that little area. This part's half yeah. that area, and this part's half that area. So yeah. if you forget the formula, think rectangle only half, because it's only half of the rectangle that I would draw around it. Okay. So what's the area of that kite? Um, wait, so you just take half of 27? D1 times D2. D1 times D2. Mm -hmm. um, what's D1? 27. What's D2? 27. Uh -huh. Oh, 15. The other dimension. Yeah. When they give you kites, they give you the diagonals yeah. in terms of dimensions. Sometimes they may only give you half a diagonal. I mean, they might okay. only say that's seven and a half. Yeah. It is important to recognize that when you have a kite, the big diagonal bisects the smaller diagonal, but not the reverse. Okay. Notice that the little diagonal does not bisect the longer one. Yeah. But the horizontal one does bisect the vertical one. So okay. whatever that number is is what you get. Okay. You have a calculator? Yeah. Do you need to turn these in? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and come up with answers then. All right. Um... So, 27 times 15 equals 405, and then take half of 405? I would do the whole thing in one step on your calculator. Okay. Here, I got a calculator here. I'll show you what I mean. In other words, do these as quickly as you can. 27 times 15 divided by 2. I don't need parentheses. I don't need anything. That's okay. how I get that number, okay? That's 202 and a half. Okay. So that's your answer. Right. Sometimes it makes sense to break up complicated problems into multiple parts just so you don't make a mistake, but as long as everything is multiplication and division, you don't really need to do that. You can do it all like one step like that. 
Okay. Okay. Number two. Now, what's the definition of a kite? Um, Why is this thing on the left a kite? Because two of the sides are equal and two of them are not. Well, yeah, two consecutive sides are equal. These two are yeah. equal and these two are equal. Okay. Now, they don't necessarily, this thing on number two, what's that called? A qua, quadrilateral. Oh, a rhombus. A rhombus. A rhombus means four equal sides. Okay. Well, notice that a rhombus is also a kite. Yeah. Because I got that side equal to that side, and I got this side equal to that side. The fact that they're all equal to one another doesn't really matter. I can still yeah. use my kite formula. So what's the okay. area of that? Um, Fifty-four. Okay, good. Number three. What is that? Um, it's either a kite or a rhombus. It's a kite. Okay. So, what is the big diagonal? Um, that is D1. What's its dimension? Is it just two? No, the whole diagonal. Two is that little tiny part of it. Oh, um... 18? Then? Yeah. What is the little diagonal? 14. What's the area? Um, 126. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's look at number four. Again, number four is a rhombus, but yeah. it's the same formula as a kite. Yeah. So what is it? So it's um. Well, oh, actually, it's it's not quite the same formula as a kite. There's something you have to recognize. In other words, in this kite in number three. Notice that the big diagonal was not bisected by the vertical diagonal. So I had to add those two together to get the big diagonal, 2 and 16. Okay. Well, number 4, they only give us this part. That's 10. Yeah. And this is 6. Okay. Well... I guess this is the big diagonal, so that if that's 6, I know this is 6. But what's yeah. this dimension over here? Well, in a rhombus, both diagonals bisect one another. Okay. Okay, so the big diagonal is what? Uh, 20. And the small diagonal? 12. So the area is... Um, <clears throat> 120? Half of that. 60? Oh, no, 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 no. You were right the first time. Excuse me. Yeah. 20 times 12, half of that is 120, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, the only thing I'm questioning here is whether that 10 is this measurement or whether it's half of that diagonal. I can't tell from looking at it. I'm pretty sure the 6 is half of this diagonal. Yeah. Uh, you know, just the fact that <clears throat> they like 3, 4, 5 triangles. So that 10 could be the hypotenuse, <clears throat> in which case it would be 6, 8, 10. And this diagonal would be 8 plus 8. So it's possible that the big diagonal is 8 plus 8 if that 10 see what I'm saying? If that 10 is a measurement mm -hmm. of the slanted side. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Then that would be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know. I can't really tell. I think you should assume for purposes of this quiz that the 10 is the measurement of half of that diagonal. Okay. In which case, this other half is also 10. <clears throat> Find the measure of the central angle of a regular polygon. Okay. First of all, let's talk about regular polygons. I'm going to draw a hexagon. Excuse me. I meant to draw a hexagon. Regular polygon means six sides that are the same and six angles that are the same. Okay. Each of these interior angles is the same. Okay? okay? The way to analyze these things is to break them up into triangles. If I find the central point and draw spikes to each vertex, I'm going to end up with six triangles. Okay. If I had a seven-sided figure, I would end up with seven triangles. Yeah. So this angle right here is what? Uh, it's just one-sixth. What's the total angles? 360 degrees around that yeah. point, right? So yeah. it's one-sixth of 360. Yeah, which is 60? Yeah. So each of these angles is 60 degrees. Okay. okay. Now, find the measure of the central angle, which is what we just found there. Yeah. Let's go back a step. Okay. <laughs> If I want to know the total angles in that triangle, what is it? Um, 180. If I have a square, what is it? 360. If I have a five-sided figure, what is it? Isn't it still 360? No. Oh, is it Go to uh, 540? Yeah. There's a general formula that the sum of the measures of an, the angles in any polygon, regular or not, is the number of sides minus 2 times 180. Notice that with a triangle that works. There's three sides. With a square or a rectangle it works because there's four sides. And with a five-sided figure, 3 times 180 is 540. So if yeah. I said, how many, what's the sum of the angles of a seven-sided? It would be 7 minus 2 times 180, or that's 900. Yeah. Okay, so it keeps going up. If okay. I took this five-sided figure and divided up into triangles like I did my six-sided figure here, Okay. Hold on, let's back up one step. There's a few key things about polygons. One okay. is the central angle that I have come up with here. That was relatively easy to do. We just took 360 and divided by the number of sides. And that only yeah. applies to regular polygons. Okay. okay. If I want to know what that angle is, then I take the sum of the angles, which is 540, and divide it by what? Uh, by 
Wait, so... I'm looking at this five-sided figure here. There's five yeah. angles. And the sum yeah. of those angles is 540, so each angle would be 540 divided by 5. Okay. Which is 108. Okay. So the way we figure out what each of these angles is, is by taking n minus 2 times 180 and dividing by n, the number of sides. That's how I got okay. 108, is I took n minus 2 times 180, that's where I got the 540, and I divided by n. Okay. Okay. So if, let's go back to this six-sided figure here. All right. What's the measurement of this angle right there? Uh, 60. To look like a 60-degree angle? No, it looks like a bigger than 60. Okay, what's the formula? Take the sum of the angles, which is what? Uh, 360. What's the general formula? I'd like I'd like you to memorize this. Um, so n minus two always times times one eight times one eight magic okay. number in geometry. Okay? okay, so for a six-sided figure, what's the sum yeah. of the angles? So would I plug in six for uh -huh. n? All right. Um, would it just be the sum is 720? Yep. Now, okay. what is this angle here? If the sum of all six of these angles is 720, what's that one? 120? Yep. Divided by 6. Notice what yeah. I did. I took n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. So yeah. that gives you these angles right there, no matter how okay. many sides. Now, when they say central angle, hold on, I want to make sure I got my terminology correct here. They're talking about, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Okay. When they're talking about the central angle, they're talking about my original picture yeah. where I drew a center, divided it up. They're talking about this angle right there. Okay? Okay. So how do we get that angle again? Remember, that's a little different. That's a much simpler angle to get. Okay. Uh, how did I get that? Why was that 60 degrees? Because you did 6 minus 2 times 180. No. I did 360 divided by 6. 360 divided by 6. Remember the 360, whenever you go around a, a point, it's always 360. Yeah. So if I've got six triangles in there, each one of them has to be 60. In other words, it's got to be yeah. 360 divided by the number of angles that are there. Okay? okay. So for this nine-sided figure, what is each angle going to be? Um, for a nine-sided figure? Uh -huh. um, 360 divided by nine. 360 divided by 9. Each of those angles would be 40 degrees. Yeah. 
for a 16-sided figure. Okay, um, 22.5. Okay, for a 20-sided figure. 18. And finally, for a 28-sided figure. Um, 12.8. Okay, those are your answers for those four questions. Now, okay. conceptually, this is called what? That is called which angle? That is called the, hmm, now I'm wondering if I've done that correctly. Just a second. I better make sure I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Man, my book says central angle is on page 671, and they don't define central angle on page 671. Hmm. Only thing that I'm not a thousand percent sure. Oh, the central angle of a regular polygon is the angle whose vertex is the center and whose sides contain consecutive vertexes. Okay. If you divide 360 degrees by the number of sides, you find the central angle of the polygon. Okay, I got it right. Okay. All right, sorry. There's nothing I hate more than giving out wrong information and then discovering it after I've left the session. Yeah. So, now let's talk about finding areas. Okay. I want you to memorize the formula, but I want you to understand the formula also. Okay. And let's draw my hexagon. This shape here. It's supposed to be a regular hexagon. If I start with my central angle, yeah, I got six triangles there. They're all the same because it's a regular yeah. polygon. Mm -hmm. What is the area of each of these triangles? What's the formula um, for the area of a triangle? Uh, base times height? One half base times height. One half base times huh? height. Again, to remember that, think rectangle is base times height. Yeah. That triangle always fits in half of that rectangle. Yeah. No matter how you draw it. If I draw it this way, it's half of that rectangle. So yeah. the triangle has to be half base times height for the same reason that the kite has to be half one diagonal times the other. Yeah. Okay. So let's say they give you a base and they give you a height. Okay. Well, the area of each triangle is going to be one-half, six times that height, which I'm going to call the apothem. Okay. Well, the area of the whole six-sided figure would be times six, right? Yeah. Because there are six triangles there. Yeah. So if we figure out the area of each triangle and multiply it by the number of sides, we have the area of the whole thing. Okay. Okay, let me change this letter to read A, because that's exactly what the apothem is. The apothem is the distance from the center of the polygon, not to the vertex, but 
perpendicularly to the side. In other okay. words, this three right here, that's the apothem. Okay. Now, they gave us, let's, let's go back a moment here and put in exactly what they gave us for this problem. Okay. They gave us, this is 3.5, and they gave us the apothem was 3. Well, if I can figure out this distance right there, I've got the area of each of those triangles, right? That would be the base. I know the height is 3. So if I can figure out the size of each side, I'll be able to figure out my area. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at this triangle right there. Okay. <sighs> That's a right angle, so it's a right yeah. triangle. That's 3. That's 3.5. What's this? Remember, that, remember I said that you're going to have to solve right triangles hundreds of times? Yeah, so can you just use Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Okay. You could also use trig, yeah. but Pythagorean theorem might be a little easier. Yeah. So... You remember how to do it quickly? What is this side x equal to? Um, Remember, it always starts out square root of. Oh yeah, square root of 3.5. Squared. Everything inside the radical is always squared. Yeah. And then minus 3 squared. Okay. Can you come up with that number on your calculator? Square 3.5, subtract 9, and then take the square root of it. Um, 3.25. Uh huh. That doesn't sound right. I think 3.5. No. Let me do it on my calculator just to make sure. So if we square 3.5. We get that. Subtract 9. Yeah. And we get that. And take the square root of that. Uh. Ah. What's the square root of 3 point? Maybe I have to do square root like the. Oh, I guess I have to do square root like this. 3 point. Two five end paren. Okay, one point eight zero. We'll round it off to one point eight zero. So okay. x is equal to one point eight. Okay. What is the side length equal to? Um, it's just times two, that right? Uh -huh. Then three point six. And it's times 2 because this big triangle there is yeah. isosceles and will always be isosceles. Because it's a regular yeah. polygon, these are always going to be isosceles triangles, which means when you drop a vertical or the apothem, it bisects yeah. the base. So if we can figure out what half that triangle is, we can figure out the whole base. Okay, so the whole base is 3.6. So what's the area of one of the triangles? So one half base times height. Give me the numbers. Uh, 3.6. That's the base. And then 3. That's the height. 
Okay, so... And how many triangles do we have? Six. So if I multiply this number by six, that will give me the area of the hexagon. Yeah. And that is your answer, whatever that number is. Let's see, I can reduce that to a three. I can make that a nine. Whatever nine times 3.6 is. Times three points thirty-two point four. That's your area of that figure. Okay. Fourteen. A little harder. Okay. Fourteen. We are going to have to use trig. How many sides does that have? Um, uh, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's an octagon. Notice it looks just like a stop sign. Yeah. All stop signs are octagons. Okay. okay. So I'm going to look at just one triangle. I'm not going to try to draw the octagon. Okay. This dimension is 14. This dimension is yeah. 14. I need the apothem and okay. I need the base in order to figure up the area of that triangle. So what I really need is this angle. Yeah. What's that angle again? Uh. Um, How do I get that central angle from the three previous questions? Oh, you have to minus it from 360? Divide or? it. 360 yeah. divided by that. Remember that all around that point is 360 degrees. Yeah. So if I'm looking for one-eighth of that, it's got to be 360 divided by 8. What is that? 45. Okay. 45 degrees is this angle right here. That's yeah. not going to help me figure anything out. Yeah. I need the small angle. Okay. What is this tiny angle right there? Um, half of 45 half? degrees. Yeah, because again, okay. these are isosceles triangles. The apothem is a vertical. It bisects that angle. Yeah. So now, I know this seems tedious, but now we have to solve this triangle. Okay. And we know that's 14. Yeah. But we need A... And we need, I'm not going to call it B, because it's half a B. So I'll call it X. Okay. A is the apothem. What trig function allows me to solve for both X and A? Okay. Um, so 14 is the hypotenuse, right? right. There's the right angle. So, all right, let me write, like, Saka, whatever. Sokotoa. Sokotoa. When your big toe is infected, you got a Sokotoa. All right, so it's tangent, right? Oh, wait, wait, no. Tangent's the only one that will not give you an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because tangent um, would relate X to A. That's yeah. two variables. You've got to come up with a trig function that relates one of these to 14. Yeah. So what trig so, function relates it to 14? Sine. Sine of 22.5 degrees oh. equals what ratio? Equals x over 14. You got it. Which means x is equal to 14 times that. Okay. Now, 
what's 14 times the sine of 22.5? Um, so, how do I do that? 14 times yeah. the sine of 22.5, right paren. I, can I go grab my bigger calculator real quick? Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Alright, so sine of 14. No. 14 yeah. times yeah. the sine of 22.5. Okay. Uh, 5.35. Which makes my base what? Um times two of that. Uh -huh. So 10.74. Yeah. Still need the apothem. Let's go back and use a different trig function to figure out A. At this point I could use the Pythagorean theorem, but trig functions actually are easier. What okay. trig function relates A and 14? Um. Cosine. So cosine of 22.5 equals what? Um, In terms of the variables. Uh, 0.923. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cosine of that angle equals what ratio? Equals... Ka. Um, What's ka mean? It means adjacent over, over hypotenuse. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So, okay, so equals a over 14. Okay, which makes a equal to 14 times the cosine of 22.5. Come yeah. up with that number. 12.93. Okay, now we've got everything we need to figure. In other words, I can figure out the area of that triangle. How many triangles do I have in my eight-sided uh, figure? Eight. So my area of the octagon is going to be the area yeah. of each triangle, which is one-half of the base, which is 10.74 times yeah. the height of each triangle, which is the apothem, that's 12.93 okay. times 8, because there's 8 triangles. Okay, well, so... The base of 10.74 times 8 is the perimeter. So it okay. gives me two formulas for the area of a polygon. One is one half the side length, that's the side length, times okay. the apothem, times the number of sides. So that is one formula for the area of a thing, but the number of sides times the side length is the perimeter, so it's also this. It's one half of the perimeter times the apothem. Okay. So either one, doesn't matter which one you memorize, I almost prefer this one, even though it's a little bit longer, just because it conceptually shows you why it's that way. Because yeah. there's the area of each little triangle, and there's the number of the triangles. Yeah. Okay, whereas the perimeter is not so clear, how do we get perimeter? This is a little shorter, especially if they should give you the perimeter, then yeah. it would be a little faster to use this. But let's make mm -hmm. sure we memorize those 
fact, pretty much everything we're doing here you need to memorize. Okay. I, I, I haven't seen one thing yet that you can skip in terms of memorizing it. Okay. All right. Fifteen. How many right. sides is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, now this is a twelve-sided figure with a side length equaling ten. Okay. Well, Knowing the base is helpful because the triangle that I'm going to be working with is 10. If I can figure yeah. out that angle, I'll be able to solve that triangle for both for the apothem by using yeah. trick. Well, what's that angle? 36. 360 divided by 12, not 10. Oh, 12. Uh, 30. Okay. So, in order to get the apothem, I've got to drop a vertical. Okay. So that I'm dealing with a right triangle. Otherwise, we can't use trick. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's this angle here? Uh, 15. Okay. What's this length down here? 5. Now, let's solve for A. And that's all we need to solve for is A. We don't need the hypotenuse? No. Because, okay. remember, the area of this thing is going to be a function of A, the side length, and the number of sides. I okay. need this distance from the center to a vertex. Yeah. So how can I solve for A? What trig function should I use now? Tangent? Yeah. So give me the trig. Give me the equation. So tangent of 15 equals 5 over A. Well, since it's 5 over A, don't we need to do, like, the inverse or whatever? No. Uh -oh. Bear with me here. Okay. This is a number. Yeah. No, we only have one variable in this. <clears throat> yeah. That's a number. I can always get that number out of my calculator. So A, if I solve this algebraically, I multiply both sides by A and then divide both sides by tan of 15, I get A equals 5 divided by the tan of 15. I do that okay. on the calculator. All right. So the tangent of 15. You've got to do the 5 first. It's got to be 5 divided okay. by the tangent of 15, end paren. All right. Equals 18.660. Okay. Now we have the apothem, 18.66. Okay. We have the side length, they gave us that, is 10. And mm -hmm. we have the number of sides, 12. Yeah. Those are the, that's all you need to solve for the area. Okay. Remember what the area formula is? The area? One half times height. Well, in terms of these three variables, what's the area? Um, one half side times apothem. That would give you the area of each triangle. Okay. How many triangles are there? Twelve. That gives you the area of the polygon. Okay. So, let's memorize it as a general formula. One half okay. times the side length times the apothem times the number of sides. One half san. Okay. Okay. 
So to figure out the area of any polygon, you merely need the apothem, the side length, and the number of sides. Those yes. three things. Notice I did not need this distance here in the next problem. Yeah. You can use that distance to figure out the apothem and the side length, but that's all. I can't, I can't plug in, for this problem I'm pointing at over here, I can't plug in 12 into this formula in any way, shape, or form. That's not S, that's not A, and that's not N. Yeah. So I have to figure out S, A, and N separately so that I can use this formula every time. So yeah. No matter what information they give us, we have to figure out S, A, and N. Okay. So let's, as long as we're looking at this, hold, hold on, let me make sure this is what I think it is. Uh, now let's do 16. I'm not, I guess this goes with this word problem here. Uh, let's, let's just go in order. Find the area of a pentagon that has an apothem of 7 centimeters. Pentagon is how many sides? Uh, 9. You ever been to Washington, D.C.? Yeah. You ever seen the Pentagon? Yeah, I think so. I don't really remember. It was a five while. sides. No, five. five sides, five floors. Okay. It's a perfect Pentagon. This is a hexagon here. This has got six. I'm not good okay. at drawing Pentagons, and I'm not sure you need to be able to draw these things. We'll call that a perfect pentagon. Okay. okay. And it's telling me that we have an apothem. Remember, the apothem is always measured perpendicularly to the side, not the vertex. Okay. So that's seven. All right. Now we need to solve for the side length, which is that. Number of sides, I know. Number of sides is five because it's a pentagon. The apothem yeah. I know, that's seven. So all I need to do is solve for the side length, and I got all three variables I need to calculate the area. Yeah. So let's examine a triangle. And remember, you always have to do the main triangle. By that, I mean that's the main triangle. Right. Okay, there's five of those inside that pentagon. Yeah. Well, in order to use trig, we need right triangles. So yeah. we always have to split that main triangle in half by dropping an apothem. Okay. So let's examine this triangle right here. First of all, we need that angle because this angle is going to be half of that angle. Yeah. So what's this angle that I've circled on the left? On the left? Yeah, this one right here. So that's the central angle. Yeah. In other words, that's this angle right here. Huh? 360 or is it 540? 360. Remember, it's always okay. 360 around the middle. 540 okay. would be the sum of these outside angles. Oh, okay. Okay. But at the moment, that doesn't do us a lot of good. So okay. you always kind of want to work with the central angle. Working with the central angle allows you to get this angle right there. Okay. Because it's always this angle that I've check marked here is half of the central angle. So the central yeah. angle is 360 divided by what? Uh, five. That's 72. Yeah. Half of 72 is 36. So that okay. angle is 36. It gave us the apothem. The only thing we need is x, because x is half of s. 
Okay. How do we get X? Um, a trig function. Which one? Um, it's got to relate. Yeah, it's got to relate X to seven. Yeah. So what should I write? So tangent thirty six equals X over seven. So X equals seven times tangent of thirty six. What number is that? Um. Point seven two six. You sure? Oh wait, do I have to times that by seven? Uh -huh. well, when I when I write it like this, always put it into your calculator, just like that in one step. Seven uh, okay. times tan of thirty six. Okay. So five point zero eight five. Well, I'm going to round it to five. Okay, what's that make the side length? Ten. Okay, now we got all three of our variables. If we can remember our formula, we got our area. What's the general formula? A equals one half of um. What's the base? So Which variable represents the base of that triangle? This triangle right here. The side. Okay. What's the height of that triangle? Which variable? Uh, the apothem. Okay. And what's the third letter? Uh, the number of sides. Right, which is the number of triangles there are. Yeah. San. S-A-N. It's one half okay. San. So, in this right. case, it's one half times... Five. Yeah. Hold it. Excuse me. Where'd I go wrong here? Um, I think you're good. S was ten. Yeah. Because X was five. Okay. You came up with a, a X of five. Okay. Yeah. So. The base is 10, the apothem yeah. is 7, and the number of sides is 5. So that is 25 times 7, 175. Okay. okay. And that's essentially the way you're going to do all of these. You have to find that central angle. In other words, 360 divided by the number of sides. Okay. And then you're going to have to take half of that to get this tiny angle right there. And then using this right triangle and that angle and whatever other dimension they give you, you can solve for the apothem and the side length. Okay. That's always the procedure we're going to use. All right. So, let's take one last look at 18. An arm rail is built around the perimeter of this gazebo. What's the length of the arm rail? They want to know the perimeter. Okay. okay. Well, let's see. How many sides do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, or ten? One, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Nine. So it's a nine-sided figure. So N is nine. Let's start with the central angle. Okay. Um, central angle is 360, is it 30? Oh, divided by 9. 40, I think. Yeah, 40. Okay. So, 
when I draw my nine triangles that look like this, that's 40. Yeah. Okay. So if I draw my right triangle that represents half of that triangle, okay. that becomes 20. The only measurement they've given us is from the center to a vertex, that's that hypotenuse. That's what's 12. Now you have enough to calculate X and A. Okay. And we don't really need A. Um, Why? Because the only question they've asked us is the perimeter. Yeah. So if I can figure out X, well, then the side length is 2X, and there's 9 of those. So it's going to be 18 times whatever X comes out to be is going to be the perimeter of that gazebo. Let's set up our okay. trig function. Right. Relating X to 12. Not X to A, but X to 12. Okay, so... Um sine of 20 equals x over 12. Which means x is 12 times the sine of 20. Yeah, so 12 times sine of 20 equals 4.1. Now take that number and multiply it not by 2, but by 18. Okay, 73.87. There's your parameter. Okay. You, know, you see why I said 18? Yeah. Because times 2 would give you a side length of 8.2, but then there's yeah. 9 of those in the perimeter. And they're all equal according to our drawing, so it's just 9 yeah. times that, and that's how you get 73.87. The okay. only reason I suggested multiplying that by 18 is you don't incur round-off error if you do that. You yeah. don't want all of that round-off error, which is really going to accumulate pretty big when you're multiplying it by 18. So whatever long decimal answer you got when you multiply 12 times the sine of 20, take that answer, multiply it by 18, then round off. Okay. Okay? All right, I have 8 o'clock, so we're going to have to end it before we do the very last part of that question, but I think we've covered this stuff pretty good for you. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. Just remember how you get S, A, and N. Yeah, sand. Right. Sand, one half sand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you next time. All right, thank Bye -bye. you.